Hi there. I'm Ron Rogers, and this is a story about an Air Force flight test check ride that went very wrong, very fast, or how we almost died and how things can get out of hand very quickly. This was the Air Force Flight Test Center in the late 70s. I was a senior flight examiner in standards evaluation at the Flight Test Center. There was a lot going on in the late 70s. We had the F-15 program, the F-16, the B-1, the A-10, F-5E, and just a, a plethora of a lot of little programs that were going on. It was a great time to be out there. There was just a, a lot to do, and it was very exciting and very interesting. We used the T-38, which is an Air Force advanced trainer tandem seated front and back, very uh, relatively inexpensive to operate, and it was a very good aircraft for chase missions. Uh, the pilot flew in the front seat, and you could put in the back seat a photographer, another pilot, or a flight test engineer. And in the case of me giving check rides, I sat in the back seat as the, uh, the flight examiner. There are two basic types of uh, flight, uh, flight chase. They are photo and safety chase. Um, photo chase, as it implies, we put a photographer back there, usually with a high-speed camera back in, the, in this day, 200 frames per second. And we photograph uh, such things as weapon separations to make sure that the weapons separate cleanly and properly. And if anything goes wrong, we have very good uh, photographic evidence. The other type of chase is basically a safety chase. Uh, where you just go up and uh, you check the aircraft over for any problems, open panels, which I've discovered uh, improper um, situations with external stores, stuff like that, or even aircraft malfunctions such as uh, hydraulic leaks. I was chasing an aircraft that when he put down the gear, uh, he uh, pinked the bottom of the aircraft and it was due to hydraulic fluid. And I called out that, uh, hey, you've got a hydraulic leak uh, before he even realized from the gauges because, you know, you have hydraulic reservoirs. It takes it a while just to, to pump the fluid overboard. And uh, shortly thereafter, words, he had, um, realized he had had a loss of, at that time, on the A7 utility uh, system and uh, declared an emergency. And we came back and, and landed on the lake beds out there at, the, uh, at Edwards. I had a very senior individual who, who I had flown with extensively. Um, I was essentially his personal pilot. Um, I did all the paperwork and planning, and he did all the flying, and uh, he was in a very high administrative uh, position, so he wasn't terribly uh, current in uh, flying, but he flew enough uh, to keep on flight status and, and to keep decent currency. He was a, he was a, a good pilot. Um, he was a very experienced fighter pilot, and he uh, told me one time he wanted to uh, get uh, a chase check ride. And I said, okay, I didn't really understand why, because um, he was a little bit too busy. And, uh, uh, but he said he wanted to, and he uh, set it up, so away we went. And the mission we were doing uh, is a fairly standard mission uh, for that anybody who is an experienced fighter pilot could fairly easily fly. Um, and, uh, of course, I got a, a thorough briefing on it, and um, uh, away we went. The mission that he chose was an F-16 60-degree dive bomb practice mission. Uh, the aircraft, on this case, didn't uh, actually release any bombs, but it was a proficiency flight or an, uh, this, to practice the maneuver and the uh, chase being in position. In this case, it was a... Um, a check right now it wasn't uncommon to uh, simply brief the maneuver uh, not practice it just go up and do it um, and that was fairly common so uh, he didn't uh, he didn't request he didn't desire he didn't want a uh, practice mission we were just going to go up and do the check right now of course we do this out at ranges out uh, in the desert and this is uh, in southern california at the flight test center edwards air force base so uh, we have a lot of uh, ranges out of there in restricted areas and um, of course you want to stay away from these and they're in restricted areas because um, there's a lot of things that impact the ground and, and you really you really don't want to be in the way. Now um, I want to talk, tell you about kind of what the mission was. This is a picture of a 45 degree dive bomb. Uh, I didn't have a picture of a 60 degree unfortunately but uh, it's it's a bit steeper. 
But the way this works is you approach the test points, and such this is, this is an, uh, an operational uh, release of the bombs uh, where tactics would be different. This is a test flight. So we approach it at the normal release uh, speed of 500 knots, but we approach it head on. Now what happens in this case is the test aircraft starts a roll and rolls inverted to pull to the 60 degree downline. Well, what the chase aircraft does as the test aircraft starts to roll, the chase aircraft also rolls, but it pulls so that you're looking as a chase aircraft, you're looking down on the test aircraft. Now this is a very uncomfortable position uh, in formation because you don't have good sight of the lead aircraft and you're looking down on them and that's just not the way you fly formation. But this was a test mission. And the point of doing this is as the test aircraft rolls out, you roll out and now you're below them and you're in the perfect position to photograph uh, the bombs being released and, and to get full photographic coverage uh, to make sure everything goes properly and you have coverage in case something goes wrong. Well, it didn't go quite as planned. What happened as the F-16 started the roll, um, my pilot was a little slow and didn't anticipate it and the F-16 is rolling and pulling and he gets high and we ended up going vertical, 11,000 feet MSL, which is roughly 8,000 feet above the ground, and because he's behind, he punches it into burner, and as he rolls out, we pass the F-16 as it's rolling out. He's at 60, we're at 90, we're at 1.1 Mach, 8,000 feet above the ground. This is not going well. I was very worried this is how we were going to end up. And, like I said, this is a situation that got out of hand very quickly. And I yelled, recover, I've got it. I came on the controls. And at the time, looking at a windshield full of ground at high speed, you're not too concerned about whether you're going to over-G the aircraft or not because impact with the ground uh, does a lot more ja damage, typically, than uh, over -Ging. So I pulled really as hard as I could and uh, you only get so much aerodynamic capability and of course it's a swept wing aircraft and the characteristics are such that you're you're in heavy buffet because you're very near uh, stalling the aircraft although you're at very high speed and uh, we weren't actually stalling it we were generating a lot of lift and at first it didn't look too bad you know you're fairly high you're 8,000 feet above the ground but uh, you're descending very rapidly and as we were uh, coming out of it it was becoming apparent that um, this wasn't going well and uh, I didn't actually plan to go between a little saddleback uh, that was down on the range there. Um, as we were pulling out I saw uh, one peak to the left and one peak to the right and of course I'm sitting in the back seat so I don't have a lot of good forward uh, visibility but if we'd have been a little left a little right we would have impacted the uh, peaks and of course that would have been very bad. So we recover from this and I said okay that's enough of that let's go back. So we recovered to the base, came back, parked the aircraft, got out, walking into uh, base operations and, and I turned to my pilot and I said you don't ever plan on flying chase do you? Looked at me for a second and said no. And that was the end of that. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please, please press like. And if you want more of these, I have more coming, uh, please um, press subscribe. Thank you very much.